Every morning, as we get our daughters ready for school, we encourage them to dream big. I want to be a doctor with a walk stuff. When I grow up, I want to be a veterinarian. We tell our girls they can be anything they want to be. And for a while, they believe it. But as adults, we don't give ourselves the same freedom to dream. When do we lose it? A few months ago, my daughter Evie asked me if being a lawmaker is an all-boy job. Even at six years old, my little girl was starting to see certain things as impossible for her. That was the day I decided to run. If my daughter wants to be a world-famous singer, I will be her biggest supporter. And if she wants to be a state representative one day, she needs to know that's available to her too. My path hasn't been typical. I've been a lawyer, a stay-at-home mom, a teacher, and now I'm running for office. I know firsthand that it's never too late to build the life you dream of for yourself. Every Arkansan should have that same chance. We deserve a state government that opens the doors of opportunity to all of us. We all tell our little girls that they can be anything they dream. Let's build an Arkansas where we can keep that promise. Hi, I'm Brooke Wallace filling in for Max Brantley with your Arkansas Times news headline updates for Tuesday, May the 8th. Little Rock Mayor Mark Sotola has announced that he will not seek re-election this year, citing a serious health diagnosis of one of his immediate family members. He's finishing his third term. This leaves State Representative Warwick Saban, a Democrat from Little Rock, and banker Frank Scott in the race. After Sotola's announcement, former Little Rock School stu Superintendent Baker Curra said that he was considering running and expected to make a decision before June the 1st. Arkansas Stop the Violence founder, Reverend Benny Johnson, also said today that he was considering making a run. City directors Dean Compuris and Lance Hines have been named as possible candidates in the past. Late news from yesterday, Dr. Peter Emanuel, director of the Winthrop Rockefeller Cancer Institute at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, has resigned from UAMS effective Janu July 31st, Interim Chancellor Stephanie Gardner announced. Emanuel, who is also a professor in the UAMS College of Medicine's Division of Hematology, has directed the Cancer Center at UAMS since 2007 and oversaw the addition of the center's 12-story research and treatment tower that opened in 2010. He came to Arkansas from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Emmanuel was paid $500,000 a year, Vice Chancellor and Spokeswoman Leslie Taylor said. She said she did not know what his plans were after he leaves UAMS. UAMS has been working to erase a $72 million deficit since the second quarter of the fiscal year. Hospital officials said recently it has come within $1.7 million of its budgeted deficit of $39 million by laying off hundreds of employees and leaving hundreds of positions unfilled. It plans to have a zero deficit budget for the 2019 fiscal year. Well, early voting began yesterday for the May 22nd primary election. Arkansans will also choose judges, including a state Supreme Court justice. The voter ID law passed by the Arkansas legislature last year will be in effect thanks to a ruling last week from the state Supreme Court. A Pulaski County Circuit judge enjoined the law, but the justices stayed that injunction. This will be the first Pulaski County wide election in which the new ID law applies, Sean Camp, the assistant director at the Pulaski County Election Commission, confirmed. Well, that's all your news headlines for today. You can read more on the Arkansas blog. And don't forget, Margarita Fest is this Thursday, May the 10th. You can get your tickets at centralarkansastickets.com. Thanks and see you tomorrow.